Welcome to this special episode of Year in Review and this is an episode with a difference. In the earlier episodes, we have been reflecting upon the year that has gone by. But in this episode, we are going to do a double reflection. Wondering what this is? We are talking about the 22 articles that were published on FromTheExpertsMouth.com, a platform that we run. And what I am going to be doing in this episode is reflecting upon the contents of these articles published by 22 different authors. As I was doing this exercise, I realized that many of these authors are very different from me. Their backgrounds are different, their professions are different, their qualifications are different. However, while reviewing the articles and going through them, a strange thing happened. Each one of those articles triggered some special memories in my mind, despite the fact that the authors shared very different backgrounds, there was something that connected the stories, their stories and my stories together. So if this can happen, I am sure while you go through this episode and also read some of these articles and the shared experiences of others, you will realize that all of us as human beings share something much more in common than what the outward manifestations lead us to believe. So stay tuned right until the end of the episode because I am saving the best for the last. Since 22 articles are a lot to cover, I will keep the format simple. I will not talk about what the article contains or what the author is trying to express and I will drop the links in the description below so that you can read any one or as many of these articles as you want. What instead I will focus on is some of the memories and thoughts that were triggered in my mind as a result of reviewing, reading and reflecting upon these articles. So first up, let's just start with childhood. One of the most significant things that happens in childhood is the ability to pick up a language and start expressing ourselves. This article reminded me of incidents from my childhood. My maternal grandfather realized that his mother tongue was losing its importance and people were abandoning it. So apart from the many social initiatives he took, some of which continue to this date, even after he is gone, one of the things that I remember from my childhood is that he put in place an incentive mechanism for us to watch movies that were made in our mother tongue. The story and visuals in Caught Craft Handed reminded me of those episodes when as a child I would be busy playing games and my grandmother would interrupt those games to ensure that she takes the measurement. What she was doing was hand knitting woolens and sweaters for us. This is something that we just don't see in the world today around us. But this story somehow reminded me of these memories which had not even crossed my mind for the last 20-30 years at least. Such is the power of sharing one's stories. You don't know what you can trigger in other people's minds and memories. I remember the incessant stories that my grandfather used to tell me about his times. I had heard them so many times that even though I used to patiently listen to him and pretend each time as if I'm hearing those stories for the first time, the repetition and the reinforcement of those stories ensured that they remain entrenched in my mind and those stories became legends. Growing up, if I look at the kind of toys that we used to play with, what I realized today is that there was a perfect harmony between digital toys and traditional toys. I still remember with equal fondness both my set of wooden toys as well as the Nintendo Turtle Bridge on which I could play for hours and hours. 16 is a special age and I am sure each one of you has many recollections and memories. But what reading some of these articles does is trigger many more which were lying dormant in your mind. One of those occasions that I remember was the day when we started walking back from school instead of taking the school bus because it took a detour. Before we knew it, we had walked the entire 9 km distance from school to home just because we had good company and we were 16. The journey of youth continued as we became the MTV generation, the first ones to be beneficiaries of satellite television, of cable TV, of VCPs and VCRs, which is a video cassette player and recorder by the way, for those who may not be aware. And we always thought we were much cooler than our elder generation. And today the tables have just reversed and the Gen Z thinks the same. Bollywood was always an important part of growing up. 
This thought never crossed my mind over so many years. But while growing up, I was in a place which had eight movie theatres within a radius of one or two kilometres. And this was not the era of multiplexes. So I'm talking about eight different single screen theatres. Summer holidays always entailed a trip to the mountains. And many a sunrise and sunset from the top of the mountain peaks flashed in my mind. And coming to more recent times and the most recent trips, the mother of all road trips where we did seven and a half thousand kilometers in 26 days. And on many of these days, we had no idea about our plan for the day, what our destination is going to be, where is the reservation for tonight. None of this was planned and the journey was as spontaneous as it could get. You could say that we were inspired wanderers. How quickly things have changed in the city of birds. I remember not too long ago, in fact in the 90s, I was staying in Vasant Kunj in the heart of Delhi and we used to have peacocks coming and sitting in our balcony. That was such a sight and I never realized that these things would go away so quickly. And this one reminded me of one of the biggest changes in my life, economic, financial, social crisis that engulfed us as we transitioned and moved from Calcutta to Delhi. And ultimately, we had to get over it. And the only way we could do that was by saying yes to life and completely changing our outlook, our mindset and the efforts that we put in towards our career goals and towards improving and enhancing the quality of our lives. We did say a big yes to life. During the pandemic, I was fortunate enough to be on the other side of the table where I was able to help people who recounted their stories of how they were going through depression or feared that they would get into one. I am fortunate enough my articles and my book help people through this very very rough phase. Introspection is indeed a very powerful tool. If I look back at my younger days, there was a lot of raw, unchannelized, angry energy within me. And today, when people look at me, they often say that I epitomize calmness. All that energy is still very much there. Instead of directing it outside, it is all directed inwards. And that energy is what propels me forward. Spirituality means different things to different people. Some consider it to be intertwined with religion. For others, it is an elevation of the mind. For me, it is an extremely simple definition. If we are becoming a better version of ourselves and if we are helping people around us to do the same, that is the ultimate spiritual journey. Banking has indeed come a very long way. I remember the first time with my own earnings when I had opened a bank account. It used to get credited with 225 rupees per month and that used to be an exciting event calculating on my calculator how much it would accumulate after I finished three years of mandatory articleship as a part of my chartered accountancy course. Banks and the bank balances have come a long way since then. And if you are thinking you must be minting money, then let me tell you a lot of these stories of hard work, grit, determination, sacrifices are never told. There is a lot behind this process of becoming successful or in some cases, people even consider you to be an overnight success. This journey has taken me through many different paths, some of which are enshrined in the title of this article itself, starting off with audits as a chartered accountant, down to doing more smart things through the use of technology and consulting frameworks, and finally into the legal world where I was the CEO of a law firm for the last 11 years. It's funny how things just come together in one phrase. One of the big challenges of leadership roles has been having these difficult conversations with people and I am reminded of so many of them. I got much better at these as I changed the focus from trying to justify the situation and myself and my organization to being empathetic to the other person and trying to genuinely find ways and solutions to help the person on the other side. Corporate life tends to get very busy and hectic with a plethora of deadlines breathing down your neck all the time. My experiences helped me come up with a couple of corollaries to the very famous Parkinson's law and even develop a framework around time management. One of the biggest challenges today is that of being mindful. 
of being able to focus on the task at hand and eliminating distractions, which is one of the cornerstones of the directed framework. The last two pieces reflect the most powerful habits that one could adopt, reading and writing. And by reading, as I've also mentioned in my book, How to Stay Positive and Productive, I do not restrict myself to just the mere act of reading books. It means consuming quality content in any form whatsoever. The whole purpose of starting from the expert's mouth was to change the content narrative. Sharing of experiences is priceless and while outwardly manifestations may change, on the surface we may all appear to be different. After reflecting through these articles and connecting their stories with my own, I do realize that the entire 8 billion population of the world is united. We are all so similar at the core level. So as you reflect on the reflections of my reflections of the authors, so that's a triple reflection, do make sure that you read and write enough and reflect and share your thoughts. These are all two sides of the same coin, reading and writing, reflecting and sharing, taking and giving. So let the humanity flow with you and me, two and three in 23. The links to all of these articles you will find in the description below. And do remember to hit the like button and share this video with your network. And also drop in your comments about what are some of the memories that triggered in your mind as you watch this episode, those which were in the dormant state of your mind. I would love to hear from you. And if you would love to have more insights, then do remember to hit the subscribe button and also the bell notification. So with that, I will see you in the next episode.